Hi, this is Danny Flexen and welcome to this week's edition of Flexpectations. For the uninitiated, we're here every Thursday, 4.30pm, to talk about the upcoming fights of the weekend. And after what seems like forever, the last few weeks, we've finally got some action to look forward to this weekend. So let's get right into it. Sunday night is the big one, the one we're going to focus on. It's actually available on UK television, which is a boost for us all, as um, Jose is Kataki defends his IBF super middleweight title, hope I pronounced his name right, against unbeaten Caleb Plant. That takes place in Los Angeles, um, Sunday US time, early hours of Monday morning for us on ITV4, as part of the new deal between ITV and Premier Boxing Champions, Al Heyman. So we're all glad to, to see it kick off with that. Obviously we've got Broner Pacquiao or Pacquiao Broner next week. Um, but as Katagi against Plant is an intriguing fight in its own right, um, good show. Uh, we'll see, as Katagi, you've probably seen him before, especially in his two fights with Andre Durrell. Um, he lost the first one on this controversial disqualification, as most people saw. Took a shot from Durrell's trainer and uncle after the fight, which caused a lot of um, furore on social media especially. He took the shot well, to be fair. Maybe uh, Durrell's uncle's not much of a puncher, we don't know. Um, but yeah, in the rematch, just dominated Durrell, pressured him. Didn't let him have a moment to breathe, and in the end, Durrell was retired in the corner. So perhaps poetic justice there for what happened in the first fight. Um, he was long. He was IBF interim champion after that. When James DeGale vacated his IBF title, as Kategi was upgraded to full champion, DeGale not so much wasn't keen on fighting as Kategi, but saw that the Eubank Junior fight, which has since been announced, was perhaps an easier fight for him, and certainly a, a bigger money fight for him. As Katsuki presents all sorts of problems, both for the gal and for Plant. He's six foot two, he's rangy, he's a pressure fighter, he's got a great work rate, and he can dig as well. He's a nightmare to fight with those long arms, cuts the ring off well, and he's constantly on you, and you think you're out of range, but you're not. That's what makes him difficult. Plant earned this chance with a 12 round points victory over former world title challenger um, Rogelio Porky Medina. You might have seen, remember him from giving the gal a tougher than expected challenge for his belt. Medina's a bit of a gatekeeper, really. Plant won every round against him. Plant's also toy, six foot one. He's not as rangy. He hasn't got as long a reach as his Katagi, which is going to be a bit of a problem for him because he's not a big puncher. He's got a slick, um, skillful style, which could give his Katagi problems, especially early on. But as the fight wears on and as Katagi puts on the pressure, it's hard to see Plant keeping him off. So, and as Katagi stoppage, I'm not sure what the odds are um, on the method of victory, but definitely worth looking into. Plant could give a better than expected account of himself and go on to other big fights, but as Katagi looks like a real star in the making and a real difficult guy to fight, so if he gets that, maybe we could look ahead to possible unifications with the likes of Callum Smith, another rangy puncher. What, what an interesting clash that would be. A real shootout between kind of, yeah, long, long bangers, basically. Two, two kind of bigger but probably not as good to be fair Thomas Hearns likes, but yeah we, we definitely like to see that, that fight in the future but as Katsuki of course got to get past Plant first really good fight to watch decent undercard as well so tune in in the US obviously if you, if you can or in the UK on ITV4 early hours of Monday morning I should just mention as well um, Showtime I've got a show in uh, Shreveport Louisiana on Friday night so tomorrow night um, with young uh, rising star, I guess you'd say, he's only 20 years old, Devin Haney, um, former junior amateur star in the US, uh, Floyd Mayweather protege, and both junior and senior actually have worked with him. Caused a lot of um, people to sit up and take notice, he's a lightweight last year, got good victories over the likes of Mason Menard, Juan Carlos Burgos, so he's a real comer and he's still only 20, but he's got quite a lot of experience at a decent level considering his age. He's got a South African challenger who's 28 years old, a lot older, but not had that many more fights. He's 25 and 0. Most of his fights, or actually all of his fights, in fact, have taken place back home in South Africa. Earlier in his career, he's beaten noted South African veterans like Pat Malinga, uh, Zonke Fana. Um, I think he's, well, I can pronounce his name right, his category was hard enough. I think his name's Olisani Nongani. Um, apologies if I got that wrong to the South African fans out there. Um, but yeah, he's, he's come with a lot of confidence, um, but he is his first fight outside South Africa. He doesn't have the amateur pedigree that Haney had. You know, Haney turned pro really young, as did Nongani, who turned pro at 20. Um, but Nongani only had about, I think it was 25, maybe 30 fights as an amateur. I was looking at an article earlier this week on the Ring 
website where he was talking about his, his short amateur career. Although he did say that the sparring and some of the early fights he's had in his career is partially compensated for that. It's quite tough on that South African scene. He's got two kids. He lives in a, an informal settlement back home. He needs a big win. He needs those big money fights. He's going to be very hungry. But Haney's probably... Haney looks a bit special, if we're honest. And he's been built up as a star. We would expect him to, to get the job done, um, whether it's within the distance or on points, you would expect him to look good doing it. This could be a bit of a coming out party for him, headlining a TV show in the US um, so early in his career. We look forward to watching him, see how, how he goes. So that's the two biggest fights this weekend. Obviously next week there's more stuff to look ahead to. The Zone, Matchroom USA have got a show over in New York um, and Bob Arum's going with top rank on the same night in Verona in upstate New York so we can talk about the differences and comparisons between those shows so that'll be next week 4.30pm on Flexpectations but for this week please leave your comments below um, tell us what you think of Devin Haney is he a real rising star is he an overhyped prospect and why um, also tell us about Uzkategi you know is he the best super middleweight in the world although Callum Smith's there on merit at the moment but in terms of talent ability potential could as Kategi supplant him um, and the likes of David Benavidez and others who, who returns soon as well. We'd like to know what you think of him. As Caleb Plant got a chance, am I writing him off unfairly? Tell us what you think of Caleb Plant. We'd love to hear your comments below and we'll see you next week, 4.30pm Thursday for the next Flexpectations. Thank you.